Hi guys, it's Kelly here, and today we're going to be doing a video that's featuring some stamps by Neat and Tangled. This is the Big Top Birthday. It's a circus set. It's totally adorable. And um, I wanted to draw my background. So a lot of times people see a hand-drawn background and they think there's no way that they could do it. So I'm kind of going to show you the way that I did it, and I'm totally a cheater. Like, huge, huge cheater. So I have this piece of cardstock that I had cut a circle die out of and I never throw anything away so it was just laying on my desk. I was like I can totally use this to draw curtains. So I'm using the Simon Says Stamp um, large grid paper to line up where everything needs to be and originally I was going to, <clears throat> first of all, excuse me, my son decided to give me a cold for my birthday so you guys are just going to have to bear with me. I figured it was better my sniffling gravelly voice than having to listen to music. So anyway, moving on. At first I was just going to do two curtain circles and then two straight lines. I ended up changing it afterward, but I'm going to do the stamping and then I decided I was going to go back and just kind of switch it up. So I love this little banner that is included, um, but I wanted to turn it into kind of like a stand for the little characters to stand on this banner on top of a stage. I thought it would be just super cute. So they have um, like World's Strongest Man in his little striped shorts. And I did it. It is a birthday set. You could use it for other things too. But I used it for birthday because it was my birthday. I was supposed to have this card up yesterday and it was my birthday. But that didn't happen. So anyway, here I'm using that same circle die and I decided to add in a couple of more curtains, just a few more layers and then also one right across the top. I didn't really like the way just the two joined and putting that third one in the middle um, really just brought it together so that there wasn't like a awkward meeting point. So now that I have everything, including the other background, which I did kind of like a starburst, just raise, I did that all with pencil and either this circle or a t-square ruler. Um, I'm going to now go back in. This is a EK Success journaling pen uh, or writing pen and um, basically it's Copic safe. So that's why I always use this one. The Copic ones are good too and so are the um, micro, micro something. I don't know. Kathy Rakusen uses those. So now that I have everything drawn out, we're going to go into the Copic coloring. And you can see right now it looks just kind of strange. Um, for a drawn background. It looks just very plain even though they have these super adorable images. We're going to uh, do some coloring to bring some dimension into this. So I'm doing these curtains and I picked a super dark. Um, I actually used a RB69? RB99? I can't remember. All the um, all of the uh, Copics that I used along with all the other supplies will be listed in the YouTube description and then on my blog as well. Um, but because in order for to create dimension, you have to have um, contrast. So you have to have really, really deep shadows and really, really bright highlights. So here, because I wanted it to be like swag, um, I'm coloring them with a semicircle. I started with the darkest color this time. Now, if you watch my videos, you know that that's a bit of an oddity for me. But I was very hesitant with this. I wanted to make sure that I didn't... Uh, mess it up because I had just spent all that time drawing and stamping it. So um, I did it the first time and then I could kind of see where I was going to go, but I realized I had way too much highlight. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to build up that color. Very similarly to how I do when I start with my lightest color, work out to my darkest and then darkest back out to my lightest. So I ended up doing this twice, but I kind of just had different stopping and or different starting points. So I'm doing the same thing I always do. I'm trying to blend out the color. So you want to start with your darkest color to put in where you want your deepest shadows. And then you're going to, <clears throat> sorry, um, you're going to blend that out with all the rest of your colors. So darkest and then whatever your next darkest is to your medium tone to your lightest. Make sure that you leave the highlight. That's really, really important. It's how you're going to make it look like there's actual um, peaks and valleys, or in this case, folds in the fabric as it's hanging down above these cute little characters on the stage. So I'm just blending that back out until I'm happy with it. I'm adding, you know, little bits of shading here and there wherever I feel like I needed to cover up a little bit of that light. And then um, once 
I was all done and I was going back to my lightest color. I didn't put the lightest color all over it like I did previously. I put it just where the highlight would be so I could keep my other colors intact. And I really think that there's a huge difference from the first time that I did it until going over it the second time. So don't uh, get frustrated with yourself. Just be, be a little patient and keep working it. As long as your paper isn't pilling or anything like that, you've got time. You've got time to figure it out. Here, I did the other two, and then I wanted to show you a different way that you can do this. And this is all fabrics. This, it's not just curtains. So this one is more of like a staggered effect. And basically, when you're doing that, you still you want to leave room for those highlights because that's how it's going to make sense. Um, but you could do this on jeans, on um, T-shirts, like little characters that are wearing T-shirts. You could give them, you know, any fabric that's pulled or stretched, you could do this. Um, and it, it's the same thing. You know, I started with my darkest and started blending out those colors. I don't want them to touch each other. I want them to leave that highlight. It's almost like a Z. Like if you could look at it and see the Z in between. So you want to leave that, that highlight section that is going to make that image pop. So I colored all the ones on top and now I'm doing the curtains that are hanging down. And here I'm just doing straight lines, just simple straight lines. And then I'm going to go over them, um, you know, working from my darkest out to my lightest and just elongating those. But again, not letting, I'm not letting them touch. I don't want to um, eat up the area where my highlight is going to be. And I have a tendency when I first lay them down that I leave a lot of highlighted area. And that's why for me, going back in that second time is super important. Um, I wasn't going to show you the whole thing. I just wanted to show you like basically where I laid down the line so you could see. But going in, in that second time is just super important. Here I wanted the background to be um, golds and yellows. Um, and I did speed it up a little bit. Uh, this whole card took me about an hour and a half. And then even with leaving it regular length, it was still like 22 minutes long. It's still long right now. It's like 17 minutes or something. Um, but anyway, so I'm just doing shading from the center and then to the outside. I also, I did use a brown on this, which is a little bit darker. Um, you might think it might not blend well, but the Y26, as long as like you work it over the brown, it really does blend and it gives that gold color. For I did this for alternating ones, and then for the rest of what was left, I just filled it in with a light yellow and did very minimal shading with um, a Y11, which is also pretty pale. For the stage portion, I played around with the idea of doing like a wooden floor, but I just thought, oh my gosh, I have so many patterns going on in here. This thing's getting busier than it's getting busy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So I just decided to do a uh, very simple um, warm gray background. Um, and when you look at this, the stage that's farther back would be darker than the stage that's up front. So that is how I'm shading it. I'm putting the darkest colors toward the back. But then I'm also shading underneath that banner because I told you I wanted it to look like they were standing on it. I wanted it to look like a stand that was sitting on the stage. So it would also cast a shadow. I am paying like zero attention to the light source in this card because I got a lot going on and it was my birthday and I was just trying to have fun and use this adorable little set from Neat and Tangled because I had bought it probably like two months ago and um, yeah, I hadn't had any time to use it. So I just really wanted to use the stamps. So you can see like making that area in the back darker, it um, it helps it to like visually so it looks set behind. I'm going to use some cool grays to shade in the banner um, here. Basically, when I do banners, I do the little uh, tails, like what would be closest. I shade the tails, and then I shade kind of like a triangle area on the part that actually holds the words. And this is just um, you know, to give it just a little bit of dimension so it doesn't look like a completely flat piece. I'm going to, originally I was going to do the little doodles, um, the little scallop doodles that I drew. Um, I was originally going to do them white, but red is really hard to clean up. In case you didn't know this, uh, red is one of the most difficult colors to clean up with a zero blender, and I just couldn't get it clean enough, so I ended up making them black. In order to do that, I used my gray markers in my 100, and I just um, made little semicircles. And I left the edge 
um, super light with a C5, and then the part up under the curtains, I colored in with the 100. So the shoes, I'm using the same colors I did before. When I color, um, if I bring in a new color, I'll always show it to you, like that V24 right there. Um, but otherwise, if I'm not showing you the color, it's because I'm using something I already showed you. And most of the time when I'm coloring, you can see the tops of the caps anyway. So I wanted him to have black hair, but I didn't want his black hair to look gray, so I gave him a blue base. Um, and that's just basically, you know, using that flicking technique and a really light hand and just laying down the blue first, then putting your um, grays up to, you know, your black if you have it, which in this case I do, um, and then working back out with those same light flicking motions is how you're going to get good blending, especially for things like hair and fur. Um, and then I went over the blue with the blue again, just to kind of make sure he didn't look like a gray haired old man. Using that same set of C's, I'm going to make his shorts, um, a black and white stripe. And there would be shading that comes below from his belt. And then I also did a little bit of shading toward the bottom of his legs. I didn't spend a whole lot of time blending it. It was so tiny, it didn't really need it. And then for the white stripes, I just used a C1 and a C3, and I made his shirt white as well, so that where his belt is would have some shading, and then up underneath his shoulders. I wanted to do the stripe on the stand red. Um, there's a lot of red in this card, uh, but I just felt like that made sense to tie in the curtains. And I left the highlight in the center, so my darkest shading would be on the outside, the lightest to the center. Um... Again, it's a small area, so you don't have to use nearly as many colors as I did. That's just kind of what I had already been using, and I wanted everything to match. For her hair, um, for the clown hair, I wanted it to be that really traditional, like, obnoxious orange-red color that you see, like, the Bozo the Clown wigs. So I gave it an, a complete coat of an orange base. And then I went in with red markers to do my shading. And I colored her hair kind of like how I approach clouds. I made a lot of little half moons. I extended some of the lines that were already there. And um, this just gives, like, the feel of a really full, curly-haired look. And like I said, I do my clouds the same way, um, just to give them some shape and some fullness. But you can do curly hair... Um, a bunch of different ways. You can do, you know, little circles. This is just how I found works best for me. And once I was done with all of the red shading, I went back in just on the orange areas to kind of cap that off. And I feel like with the orange base, it really does set it apart from the red curtains, even though they both look red. For the nose, I did a base color and then just some shading with a little line on the bottom. And I do her buttons the same way. I wanted her little dress to be white, so I'm just shading it with a C1 and a C3. I thought that the trim would be fun, um, a bunch of different colors, because that's traditionally how uh, a clown outfit looks. So I colored them all with a base color, and then I only shaded with one other color. For the blue, I used a B28, and for the red and the orange, I used the same R29. And I just put little lines of it and then just blended it back out with the, the main colors that I had used. That's pretty much, oh, her stockings. I did shading with my uh, C markers, and then I just alternated which one I colored in blue. Um, I didn't feel like I really needed to add a ton of shading. Um, I was worried about it bleeding into that yellow background. I had a little bit of trouble with the donut balloon. Uh, I felt like it just blended into the background, so I tried coloring it a brighter yellow. I didn't really like that. So now I'm like, all right, I'm bringing some browns and see if maybe that's better. Um, I was trying not to get crazy with the color combination, but I really, I just had code books everywhere, guys. Like, I'm not even kidding you. They were just everywhere on my desk, all over the place. Because I leave them out until my card is done, so I can tell you guys what I used. <laughs> so I did shadings so that it was um, like a yellow cake donut balloon with some chocolate frosting, um, and I did leave little highlights in there, though they were very hard to see by the time it was all said and done. I used the same browns to put chocolate frosting on my cake, and I kept the darkest part of the shading up to the top where the next layer would be sitting on top of it. I wasn't particularly, um, I guess, concerned about the way that the shading looked on the icing. I wasn't going for 
uh, like a super shiny look or anything. I was just trying to get it colored brown, like just some decent shading and color brown. I shaded the cake, the actual cake part of it, with uh, those same warm grays that I had used for the floor, just for something different. And then the cool grays would be uh, on the tray. So it looks maybe like a little bit silver. Finally, I'm going to do their skin tones, which normally I do first when I am coloring people, but I had so many other colors out, I didn't even get around to it. Most of the shading um, for both of them are going to be around their hairline and a little bit for her under her nose because she has this, you know, huge clown nose. So it would cast a shadow on her face. So just lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. And then I gave her um, a little bit of blush with a R32 and blended that back out with my E50. For him, I did the shading on the inside of his arms, like where it would be up um, behind his head. I felt like that area would be darker with his arms up. It's generally lighter on the outside. And then up underneath his hairline as well, he's got that cute little mop of uh, black hair. And a lot of times um, with characters like how this, there's very little leg showing in between the shorts and the pants. That's generally going to be fairly dark when you're shading um, because all of those things would cast a shadow on his legs. I did not give him the little um, blush cheeks, I don't think. Hard to remember. It was a long birthday. <laughs> my kid gave me this cold. That was my present. So there's a couple of different sentiments in there. Um, I picked out the uh, Hip Hip Hooray one. I thought that was super cute. Um, there's another one that says Let's Celebrate, and then, of course, the traditional Happy Birthday. I stamped that in there, and then I added some Clear Wink of Stella to the donut balloon, to the icing, and then just randomly um, throughout the background just to give it a little bit of shine. I was actually really happy with the way that the card came out, even though it was a ton of work. Um, yeah, just because these stamps are so dang cute. So anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment, and I will uh, try to get to it as soon as I can. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you at the next video. Bye.